As part of his plan to roll out the proposed 2018 Nigeria Corporate Governance Code for the private sector, the Financial Reporting Council briefed the media today on the features of the exposure draft of the code. In his opening remarks, the head of the Corporate Governance Financial Reporting Council, Mr. Nelson Anumaka, shared the plans to sensitize Nigerians on the code. We invited you here today to solicit your unflinching support in ensuring that your medium covers the series of public hearings, like I told you right now, in the six geopolitical zones plus FCT Abuja, and also disseminate same to the public as soon as the hearings take place in order to help us reach our target audience. Executive Secretary and CEO of the FRC, Mr. Daniel Asopakai, gave further insight on the 2018 Corporate Governance Code. What the code contains are 28 principles of corporate governance, which we believe that public interests and similar entities in Nigeria should adopt or apply in running their enterprises. So those 28 principles are the core of the code. The code also includes about 230 practices. The practices are the how companies should implement the principles. So you take each of those 28 principles, there are a number of practices that have been recommended in the code as to how companies may, or the, the, the steps companies, or the, yeah, the things they can do to ensure they are imbibing those principles in their governance arrangements. And if you recall, one of the reasons why we are doing this, or working towards a national code, is that Nigeria, as an economic entity, competes with other countries for investment capital. Okay? And investors will be attracted to environments where internationally agreed standards and codes are observed. So it's therefore important, therefore, that when we are benchmarked or assessed against other nations, investors can clearly see how well we rank. So we believe having a national code that a lot more of our commercial enterprises adhere to increases or enhances national competitiveness generally. So while, while the code is um, targeted, this particular code is targeted at um, public interest and similar institutions, because of the nature of the code, because it's principles based and it provides a framework for adaptation of the recommended practices based on the circumstances of particular enterprises. It's something that almost all commercial entities in Nigeria can look to adopt. And as more and more companies model the practices that are recommended in the code, I think, I believe nationally, more and more commercial entities, even our SMEs, would have shining or glaring examples of what good corporate governance means and can also begin to take steps to ensure their little enterprises are well managed. So bottom line, I think this is something that is geared to enhance national competitiveness. It will represent a national standard of good corporate behavior. 
It will provide a flexible framework. And like I mentioned, about 230 recommended practices, good practices of what it means to effectively govern an institution. It also provides a framework for other regulators, sector regulators, to contribute. So you have a national code into which the other codes that currently exist for different sectors of the economy can align. And I'm pleased to say, in the work that has been going on since January by the Technical Committee, we've had a lot of um, engagement with other regulators for the different um, sectors that are regulated. And I believe we have an architecture nationally where everything can fit together and everybody can play a role to ensure that as a nation it is clear what good corporate governance means and the roles different parties can play or would need to play that more and more we do things properly. Mr. Superkai speaks further on the framework and guidelines. A lot of things are new. Um, we've taken advantage of the additional time to take cognizance of developments in corporate governance generally around the world and codes. And um, it's al allowed us to do a number of important things. One, to have a real national architecture for corporate governance. As you're aware, there are a number of sectoral codes in existence already. So we do have a framework now where both the national code and guidelines from sector regulators on corporate governance can coexist. Okay? So like I explained earlier, this new code, it's based around 28 principles. So it's a principles-based code. And it has about 230 recommended practices by which corporates and other enterprises can give life to those principles. It also recognizes that those 230 practices are not the be-all of um, corporate governance practices. So it allows other important players to come in and specify either mandatory or further optional practices that enterprises can adopt. You know, UK has a very strong corporate governance code. We know of the US and others. So what other claims, considerations we're taking in, looking at the fact that you want to really have a robust but very, very sophisticated, uh, attractive corporate governance code for the economy? Okay, thanks. I mean, you mentioned the UK as one country that has or is recognized as having a strong uh, national code. South Africa is also another country that is frequently cited when you're talking about corporate governance code. So part of the work we did uh, involved us engaging with a team in South Africa that basically developed their latest corporate governance code, the King 4 code. So we had a project management, the project manager for King 4 was with us in Lagos for a while under the auspices of the IFC that supported the work. So we did look at a number of other countries in terms of what they're doing. And this gave us an opportunity to benchmark what we want for Nigeria against those other countries. You know, as you are aware, the degree to which a country or in a country to which we comply with internationally agreed codes and standards has an impact on the amount of uh, financial investment you are able to attract. So we believe if we implement this properly, Nigeria, looking at as an economic entity, will be better perceived by investors as a destination where things are done properly in terms of how companies are governed. In terms of ease of doing business and ensuring that there's no multiplicity of uh, governance in terms of the fact that you're doing yours and they have sectoral codes. For example, they've just released the National Building Code, other codes are coming out. What is the synergy with regulators in this regard? Okay, um, thanks. I think that's a very good question. The way we're looking at this, even though FRC is um, driving the development of a national code. It's not really an FRC code. It is the national code. It's Nigeria's code. All of the different sector regulators that have issued corporate governance codes in the past have been very involved in this effort and will be very involved going forward. So that at the end of the day, we have a national architecture that is streamlined. So at the apex of that will be a national code with 28 
widely agreed good principles of corporate governance. And right now, 230 agreed practices. But again, there will be more. But again, there's a framework and for developing new practices or changing the principles and also for enforcement. So I think, you know, we will all work together in a collaborative manner to ensure there are synergies and that operators are not overburdened. First is about the whistleblower policy. How is this enshrined in the FRC code and your role in ensuring that uh, companies apply with gov corporate governance principles? Okay, I, I think um, in terms of whistleblower arrangements, the code recognizes the importance of that in helping companies to have a strong um, control environment. So companies are obliged to have those kinds of um, arrangements internally. But again, beyond individual institutions, both the FROC Act and the different mechanisms we're putting in place with professional groups whose members we register, you know, they, they, they will have direct means of reaching out to agencies like the FROC in case for whistleblowing or support for where things are not being done properly within organizations. The issue of infractions, do you have a, a annual report that you're releasing on infractions which will really show how um, robust you are in tackling issues of corporate governance which will make companies sit up where they are airing and other companies will know that the, this is real uh, serious business? Thanks. I think that is something the technical committee that has been working with us on this has uh, recognized that um, even as we work cooperatively with other agencies, FRC will take the lead in terms of not just infractions, but in terms of celebrating successes of companies that are doing the right thing, you know, that serve as examples. Because, you know, one of the things we really wish for is to have shining examples of people who are doing things right and enjoying successes for that, so that more and more enterprises can emulate that. Okay? So there will be celebration of doing right. Okay? And where companies fall short, you know, like I explained earlier, it will compel regulatory intervention, either to assist them to do things right, if genuinely they are not able to, by providing templates, you know, now, where deliberately people do the wrong things, then of course the necessary sanctions would apply and again you would give maximum visibility to such um, situations to deter others. As the FRC prepares to effect the 60-page Comprehensive Code of Corporate Governance document, all stakeholders will expect that it is institutionalized to the highest standards consistent with best global practices.